how would you like to play, if you were one of the viewers here, would you like to play an Archon Mode show match with one of these players? Why are you even asking? Isn't the answer obvious? I mean, of, of course, course I would not want to put, no, I'm just kidding. Of course I would want to play. <laughs> I mean, these are just some awesome players, and if you help us get up to $300 in donations, that means that you, too, can get a chance to play with one of these guys. The top two donors are going to get to play in a, an Archon show match. The top donor with the winner of the sh this show match and the second to top donor as with the loser. And that is only if we get up to $300 in donations, guys. So it is a it's a long goal, but it's an attainable one. And I would be super excited if I were in y'all's position and had the money to spare. Just yeah. saying. Guys, we cannot stress this enough. Those those Maturino codes... I mean, those, that's, just, that's just free money, free money. I mean, you just have to take advantage of it. Get get it going and, and use those, co those codes as much as possible. Matcharino is so generous in allowing us to activate these codes like this. Let's get these pay players paid the money that they so rightfully deserve. I mean, you see all these awesome games happening right now, and these guys deserve to get paid. Definitely. And if y'all don't know what Matcharino is, Matcharino is a platform that allows us to crowdfund events like this. They uh, allow us to host these esports and they help make esports happen. They help these smaller events like this. And they are an amazing service that you that help y'all support the scene as well. Yes. Anyways, we are now going to get into this next game. All right, so here we are on Proxima Station. Finally, we're going to be seeing a game where you can take a backwards expansion right away. And considering that the map is so easy to establish a third base, uh, we could be in for a bit of a macro game. We won't be seeing any uh, two-base shenanigans if the players decide that they want to go for a quick three bases and go... Uh, for you know, like a like a 150 supply versus 150 supply, kind of like a 10 minute uh, window timing attack kind of thing. So that's very well what we could be seeing, and I wouldn't be too surprised to see that, considering that you know the score is 3-1 right now. So Bunny can't be too risky. I mean, he could try to risk it and go for it, go for some unorthodox play. But Bunny's best bet right now is just kind of play it safe. At least grab a second point, make the score 3-2 before he tries to do anything too crazy. While Sue, uh, he just needs to comfortably macro up and always does. Speaking of Sue, let us introduce our players. We have in the bottom left-hand corner, Approxima Station LE, the Zerg on match point, the Red Zerg, the something Zerg that you came up with a nickname that I've already forgotten. He's Sue. And his opponent won. Give a nickname. It is going to be. Dust Bunny currently down 1-3, but he is in no way out of this yet. If he can grab a victory here, he is back in it. And what did you call Sue? I have already forgotten it, and if we want that to catch on, I cannot be... You're, you're right. If we want to catch on, then we're going to have to repeat that. Dominant Zerg, because he just no. dominates the crap out of all his opponents. And, and if we had to give Bunny a nickname, Felipe, what do you think we should call Bunny? I mean, honestly, like, Dust Bunny already itself is such a cool name. I love the fact that this guy joined Dust, because there's so many Dust Bunny puns going around. But if we had to create a nickname for this guy, what do you think it would be? I don't know, I feel like Bunny, I mean, he may not be... He may not be Bion, he may not be Innovation, but he's just that, that little bit of dust that's hiding under your couch, always giving you trouble right there. Yeah. You're gonna give up. You, so what, we'll call him the, the Troublesome Terran? The Troublesome the, uh, Terran? The, <laughs> I don't know, the, the headache-causing Terran? I don't know, he's like, the, the, you know what, we'll, we'll call him Hellion King Prime. <laughs> okay, that he's, works he's, for me. He's not on Prime, but we'll call him HK. We have already we already have an MKP. We have a GKP. Why not a HKP, right? Hellion King Prime. I see nothing wrong with that. Now we are seeing a pretty fast layer out of Sue this game, as well as a another quick gas and a surf gas on the way as well. I believe. What is the follow up to this, Seeker? Well, we see Bunny finally for the first time. 
doing the 2-1-1 build and Zerg players, what they found out is that 2-1-1 is very vulnerable to, to quick muta. When you go for two base layer, hit a spire, and pump out mutas so quickly, it's so hard for the Terran player to hold it because they're just not expecting it. The first two medevacs they come out, they put the marines in the medevacs, fly out and try to apply pressure, leaving their bases so vulnerable to a muta counterattack. And if Bunny doesn't scout this quick enough, for instance, Right now, Spasu hasn't taken his third base yet. He, has gra he hasn't grabbed his backwards expansion yet, which means he's going to try to surprise Bunny. And when Bunny flies with his first two medevacs and tries to apply pressure, I'm going to tell you this right now, he needs to fly in the base and see that spire, or he needs to scan. If he doesn't know about what Sue is planning, Bunny's going to be in a lot of trouble. He's going to lose a lot of SCVs. As you can see right now, Bunny doesn't have an engineering bay. He doesn't have missile turrets up. He's going to be very vulnerable to an aerial surprise attack, which is exactly what Sue is aiming for. So Bunny needs to do as much damage as possible with his first two medevacs, and he needs to get a lot of scouting information done. And we can already see a, a clump of Zerglings there, right, um, right here, right at the front, denying that scouting information. He does not want Bunny to move in there, because then he will see that spire, he will know exactly what's coming for him. So very smart play by Sue there. And seven mutas on the way, and another medevac with a tank now joining the push. Yeah, and this is going to be very dangerous with the eight anti air range that the queen and with mutas, he can kill a medevac so quickly before Bunny can even drop all his marines. So Bunny needs to be very careful here. He needs to make sure he's got. He's got the speed boost off cooldown so that he can activate it as soon as the mutas come in, but the mutas are going to come in! Ooh, and is the tank going to go down? That is indeed the medevac with the tank, and he loses it! And this is exactly what I was talking about. This build is the perfect counter to 2 one, one and most Zerg players have been utilizing it. It's just so easy to snipe down medevacs when the tank players can be expecting them. Now, Bunny may take away Sue's third base here. He does get a very perfect timing cancel on that, but if those mutas do decide to uh, focus fire down and those medevacs, then they are going to lose all of those marines and both of those medevacs. Yeah, Bunny that's... Is on 9 army, 11, now 12 army, but... Yeah, no, this is the dangerous situation... ...to happen with mutas. Once you've cornered the Terran, he can no longer pick up with his medevacs and fly away. And that was the situation with Bunny. He had a medevac, he had medevacs full of units, wasn't able to fly away with them because the mutas were going to chase them anyways. This is why he is now stuck at home trying to defend, and he's in a lot of trouble because Sue has complete map control now. And Muta's already flying in there, seeing what they can see. Are maybe going to snipe off that reactor. A Liberator is out. They do not have that plus light damage as high anymore. So they don't do quite as well, but they still have that splash damage, which is very good against those mutalists. And they're gonna now fly in here. Right over desktop. Are they going to get these SCVs? They do get two SCVs down. That missile turret is not up yet. Are they gonna snipe the liberator as well? They are gonna get a couple of marines, not quite get that liberator though. And a whole lot of Zerglings waiting outside of Bunny's base. Sue is just going to keep up his counterattack as he has done this entire series. And they just take this game. Just yeah, like this was this was a bit of an unsurprising, or not unsurprising, but this was a bit of a surprising build that Mr. Turret advance in advance ahead of time because he saw the mutas, he saw that his army got wiped out by mutas. This is why you need Mr. Turret something you need to play as defensively as possible. But you see these mutas dealing so much damage right now to Bunny's main base, as well as um, the Zergling there uh, scouting that third base. Uh, Sue knows exactly what his opponent's gonna do. And he definitely has the tools and the knowledge to take this game. Yeah, no, this is this is the situation that Bunny way too much army at the beginning and did not nearly trade enough. He didn't kill enough drones to, to bring himself uh, to, to bring himself into an advantageous position. He's establishing his third base, which is a good move, but he is stuck at home. He's gonna have to play defensive. He's gonna have no choice now but to play. No, the sword just got taken out with that medevac! Oh, oh that was his that, only hope! That just hurts Bunny's chances so much more of getting back into this game with <laughs> Thor. Thor could have been so helpful, but now with Thor dying and with the medevac dying as well, it raises this Sue's map control is out of control. Just 
Wow, Sue's control on these mutas has just been impeccable. His timing on them was perfect. He, I don't, funny, all he did was 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 his first attack was cancel that third. So Bunny just has gotten nothing done this entire game, whereas Sue has been flying around with a giant flock of mutas, a couple of them maybe going down to that widow mine there. But apart from that, the mutas are just out of control. Ooh, this is a bit of a troublesome situation right now for Bunny. If you notice, he has not been able to move out of this base, and now do you see how big the creep spread is for Sue? He is, he's just, he's got total control of the game. It's, everything is going according to his rhythm and his pace, and Bunny is just trying to play catch up. In this sort of situation where Bunny's so behind, he has no choice but to aim for that late game on composition, establish a fourth command center, and try to win little engagements here and there. He can't go for a mass frontal attack, because he just doesn't have the army to take care of Suzy. And now Sue getting a big mass of banelings on the ground as well. He just has so much stuff. If Bunny forces an engage here, I don't see any way of him winning it right now. Upgrade complete. Yeah, and that is actually the situation Bunny is in right now. Said, uh, there's no way for Bunny to win this in his current situation because he's just he's just playing from really from behind. There is one thing to oh hold on a minute, we can't attack him. And they are moving in. That door needs to go down. It is pretty much the only thing stopping this mutilus. Decent magic box there as well. A few mutas are going to go down and a good number of that ground army. But they took out a whole lot of bunny stuff as well. But they are closer together on army supplies than they were for a while there. Sue, of course, building even more stuff is going to jump right on ahead there. And staying ahead in the fourth lead and the base lead. This may have been uh, just so a... Well. Just a bit of a premature attack on Sue's part, running his bane in like that. Oh, wait, hold that down, another battle is coming. There is another attack coming in here, running those bane links in. A couple of decent widow mine shots are going to shut this attack down for now, though it looks like. Yeah, but Sue is going to move out of there. Sue has just been playing so phenomenally this game. He has taken a couple of not so great engagements there against Bunny. Uh, rolling his bane links in a little early. Bunny grabbing that gold base, gonna try and get ahead. Mules on that gold base, of course, are going to be able to get a lot of mineral income in, but there is just so many mutalists still able to fly around, establish this map control, as you said, Seeker. Yeah, the thing with Sue is right now, what he's trying to do is he's trying to keep off Bunny before he can get that 3 3 out because he knows that he's going to be behind an upgrade since Sue is nowhere near close to getting a hive update, so he's going to be stuck on 2 2. What he wants to do is kill Bunny before the 3-3 comes up, before he falls behind and upgrades. But the fact of the matter is, Bunny's just doing a great job of fighting because Sue keeps running off creep, allowing his banelings to get targeted. And he looks like he's going to do it again. And if Bunny's ready for it, he could win yet another engagement. Game. And I think this is Bunny's hope here, just playing defensive, just winning these engagements, taking these small little victories, and just waiting. Goes to spiral up. Sue maybe getting a little greedy here on these plays, but no, he is going to move in. He is going to get a lot done here. Mutalist flying in, lots of banelings rolling in as well. Are going to get a few SCVs and a medevac as well as a good chunk of that army as well. These widow mines are pretty much the only hope that Bunny has of taking out this whole army here. But Sue just has way more supply. So many mutalists. I don't see how Bunny is going to take this game. Well, now Bunny does have three. Three has finished for Bunny now, so he does have a chance to get him as long as he doesn't lose any, lose out on any more engagements. And of course, three three is just that amazing upgrade for Terran. Those infantry upgrades are just amazing as Terran. They do so much. They really allow your army of these like tier one units to be in the late game and fight against these big Zerg armies. And three three is just that huge milestone for him. Yeah, here's the thing to remember about Bunny is that yes, he's lost a lot of army. He does have a fully functioning fourth base, and it is a gold base on top of that. So as long as he can continue to keep his army alive, he should be able to to play defensive and keep himself alive. Oh, the missile turret's gonna go down. Ooh, and how many SCVs are gonna die? Four so far. Five more SCVs, and it looks like Sue is just gonna fly out of there with those. 
Yeah, as you can, as you, we know that Sue still doesn't have a high tech up to work. We're just gonna see We're Zergling here. moving in here along with the Mutalist. There are not any Widow Mines right here, so he's going to have to rely on his bullets. A couple of Widow Mines finally getting in position, but they're going to waste their shots on not all too much. And it looks like Sue is um, just doing exactly what I said Bonnie needs to do as well. Just taking these small leads, taking the engagements, keeping the pressure on. Yeah, but unfortunately, Bonnie's not really. He's not leading because he's not he's not trading efficiently enough. Uh, Sue is continuously replenishing his, his his cheap units, and this is you know this is Sauron style. You know, grab, grab a bunch of cheap units and just keep trading for Terran expensive army. That's just something Sue is so good at. As we can see, medevacs going down. There are not very many medevacs. Absolutely zero medevacs left for Bunny at this moment. So if he wants to heal up his army, he's going to have to make. Or, which is what he's trying to do, but Bun or but Stu is just flying and here with these people. He may have realized that this is his time. Is he gonna move in? He's moving into this mineral line, he's going to take out that missile turret, Banelink rolling in as well. Stu may be on the final march here. Yeah, I, I don't see Bunny getting himself back in this, this situation, dropping down the less. 60 supply while Sue is still up on five bases. And remember, <coughs> this whole game, Bunny hasn't been able to move out and deal any sort of economic damage to Sue whatsoever, which means Bunny has just been playing catch up the whole time. As soon as he lost those first three medevacs in that first move out engagement that he did, it was just way too much in Sue's favor. Yeah, Sue has just had control of this game this entire time. And I think that is just what's leading him to victory. Oh god, do you see Sue building a hatchery in that So cheeky, fifth. Sue. So that cheeky. is supposed to be Bunny's fifth! GG!